Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth interactive study of the Word of God. We are enjoying a series on Isaiah the Gospel Prophet. Today, the Noble Prince of Peace, one of my favorite chapters. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School. We're glad you're with us and welcome to the team. Now I call you the Gideon's Band. You know the story of Gideon started out with what? 10,000 went to no, 32,000, then to 10,000, and then to 300. Well, we've gone from 12 to 5. Take a look at our Gideon's band. That's because of the social distancing restrictions. But we're still experiencing a powerful study. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. And we know that many of you where you are are also restricted, but the gospel is not hindered. Amen? Amen? Amen. God is speaking to us even in our homes. Maybe some of our churches are still not open. But this series on the gospel prophet Isaiah is such a blessing. And we have something special for you during this series. We are offering a digital download of an audio book called Radical Evidence. If you would like to hear radical evidence from the scriptures, including Isaiah, of Jesus as the true Messiah, plus powerful stories today, all you have to do is write to us at our regular address, sshope at hopetv.org, and in the subject line, just say free offer, okay? sshope, hopetv.org, free offer. We'll send you a link so you can download that audiobook. It is so powerful. I wish I could send one to everyone, but it would cost a fortune. But we can mm -hmm. deliver it to you at no cost, and you can even share it with your friends. We're always happy to hear from you, Hope Sabbath School members, right? Do you like getting the emails from around the world? Amen. Here's one from a Kenyan. Wait a minute, we need a wave from Lisa. Lisa, would you wave to Regina? All right. Now she's not in Kenya right now, she's in Canada. Mm -hmm. But I want you to listen to her testimony from your homeland. I used to watch the show regularly back home in Kenya and I was much closer to God back then. Mm -hmm. But when I moved to Canada, so much was happening, trying to settle down, studying, working, too much, mm -hmm. and I drifted away. Mm. I'm not proud to say it, but I've been a yo-yo Christian. You know what the yo-yo is, like up and down, right? Mm. But due to the COVID pandemic and losing my job, I renewed my walk with Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and it's been a blessing. I think it was in the month of August that I remembered Hope Sabbath School, and I started watching it again. Amen. Yes. Each show touches me. And I pray that God works on me. I need mm -hmm. to be transformed. Yeah. Amen. And my family and friends need to see a change in me. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Amen. Regina, thanks so much for writing to us from British Columbia. She says, I do not belong to any church. I have not for years raised by Catholic parents. One time attended a Pentecostal church, but discontinued. Last time I attended church was several years back in Kenya. I pray that God points me to the right church. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to tell you, of course, Regina knows this, but I contacted a Hope Sabbath School team member in British Columbia and asked if they could study the Bible together. Is that awesome? Amen. Amen. Yes. yes, because when Jesus says, or the Lord says through the prophet, if you seek me, you'll find me if you search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Well, Regina concludes, one thing for sure, I will never stop watching Hope Sabbath School. <laughs> Amen. Well, if that was the only thing you heard, you tuned in for Hope Sabbath School today, that would be an encouragement, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. That God is changing lives around the world. Well, here's one from Mersaline in Bahrain. Bahrain, that's in the Middle East. Yeah. I must confess that the Bible studies have, I'm having with Hope Sabbath School have really changed my perspective. Amen. Before, I never had an interest, but I bless the Lord how He's working on me. Yeah. God be with you all. Amen. 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 Merceline, thanks for writing to us from Bahrain. Here's a note from a donor couple in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America. Please continue the good work of Hope Sabbath School. May God bless and keep the end time window open a little longer yes. mm. to spread the message. Enclosed mm -hmm. is a gift of $500 for Hope Sabbath School. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank you yes. for partnering with mm -hmm. us. You, sometimes we read $25, sometimes $250,000, sometimes $3, yes. but we're all partnering together, right? Yes. yes. And Amen. God, God is blessing. So thank you, Tennessee. 
couple for sharing with us. Georgia, Al Al Aline writes from Georgia, and she says, I've been listening to Hope Sabbath School now for five years. I'm a church member, and I've recommended your program to many, both young and old. Amen. You facilitate with such a winsome attitude. That's talking about all of us. <laughs> we absolutely love the Hope Sabbath School team. I'm happy to know, listen to this team, I'm happy to know there's a place that is so engaging to which I can direct people who need to learn more about God. Amen. Amen. You know, I want to encourage you. You can always tell someone, watch Hope Sabbath School. Get it on your app. Download the Hope Channel app. Mm -hmm. Watch Hope Sabbath School wherever you are. Mm -hmm. You can be a blessing. What a blessing to the entire world. And then she has something to say to our little Gideon's Band team here. Mm -hmm. The young men and women who are assisting are adaptive and contribute so much to the broadcast. It makes it real with the experiences they share every week. They're so transparent in their faith. And it's very attractive to those who are struggling. God bless you all. A Jamaican living in Georgia. <laughs> well, God bless you. You know, we have a lot of uh, Hope Sabbath School members in Jamaica, your homeland, but living there in Georgia, Aline, thanks for writing to us. One last note from Seattle, Washington. Oni writes and says, I've watched Hope Sabbath School for over a year now. My life and the lives around me have been transformed. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah. It didn't say I like it. They've been Born. transformed mm -hmm. yes. by the teaching of Jesus, the Messiah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. That's my favorite word. Mm -hmm. God has put it on my heart to give to this ministry. Mm -hmm. May God multiply it and you, and may he send laborers for his harvest. Mm -hmm. Well, Oni, Amen. I just wish we could meet you in person because I sense that the Spirit of God has rested upon you and you want to be part of the mission. Mm -hmm. You know, some people ask, Pastor Derek, why do you spend time reading all those emails? Those are part of Hope Sabbath School. Yes. yes. We're not just giving information. Mm -hmm. This is about mm -hmm. transformation, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. 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 And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, right now, we want you to sing a song. Actually, we're not allowed to sing here in the studio because of the restrictions. But it's taken from our gospel prophet, chapter 55, and it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let's sing together. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the study of your word today, the noble Prince of Peace, so much about the coming Messiah who now has already come, Jesus, 
Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. I pray that as we study today from this ancient book, that Jesus would be seen in all of his power to save and that lives would be changed. Yes, that darkness would be dispelled by the light of the world Amen. is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, this is one of my favorite chapters in the whole book. Uh, Isaiah, the gospel prophet, is really an amazing book. But chapter 9, where we're going to study today, uh, actually the title, Noble Prince of Peace, that's just one of the titles that he's given in the chapter. Yes. So let's start in chapter 9. And Jason, if you could begin our study with verses 1 and 2 of Isaiah chapter 9. And I have here the New King James Version, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed, as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death Upon them a light has shined. So this is a prophecy, and by the way, if, if you miss part of our study, Isaiah tells us that God, the true God, knows the end from the beginning. So yes. he can tell the prophet what's going to happen, right? Yes. So this is a prophecy. So here's my question, Billy. Who is the great light that Isaiah is talking about? Jesus. Jesus is the great light. Yes. In fact, we're going to look at some passages that will confirm that. First, a prophecy when Jesus was still a, a tiny baby mm -hmm. in Luke chapter 2. The Holy Spirit rested upon someone. Stephanie, if you could look in Luke 2, who was this person that the Spirit of God rested upon and he prophesied about this light that had been foretold 700 years earlier? We're All in Luke right. chapter 2, verses 25 to 32. All right, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. So what clues do you see in the passage that, that Simeon is a prophet? What, what clues do you see? The Holy Spirit is upon him. The Holy Spirit was upon him. What else? It was revealed to him by the Spirit. He came by the Spirit into the temple. I mean, yes. Yes. did you get it? Yes, Billy. And I think the, the language that he was using, like a light to bring revelation to, I'm reading from the King James Version, yes. but um, he's basically repeating the same thing that we just read in Isaiah 9. <laughs> okay. He's quoting the scriptures, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, which would make sense because he's speaking by the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he's repeating the prophecy given 700 years mm -hmm. earlier. Now, think about uh, especially the Gospel of John. Stephanie? That I didn't want to pass over it. It says that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Right. So he mm -hmm. was looking yeah. for that uh, fulfillment of the prophecy. So maybe we'd miss it if we're not looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's looking with a prayer in his heart and the spirit of the Lord is with him. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Scan through your, your knowledge of the book of John particularly. Uh, references to Jesus as the light of the world. Christian? You know, I, I, a reference that comes to mind is not only a reference, but it's actually a claim that Jesus himself made. You're thinking um, of uh, John chapter John 8? John chapter 8. Would you read that for us, John sure. 8 and verse 12? Uh, John chapter 8, verse 12. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And Jesus 
said or spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm the light of the world. Yes. And you remember right at the beginning of John's gospel, Lisa, mm -hmm. could you read those first few verses? You remember it says in the beginning was the word, mm -hmm. but it also says something about light. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, John 1, 1 to 5. 1 to 4, please. Thank you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Ah! In Him was what? Light. Life. And the life was the? Light. light. Light of men. Now, you say, well, you know, anybody can claim to be the light of the world, but Matthew testifies under the Holy Spirit's inspiration that Jesus is the fulfillment of that prophecy. Yeah. Billy, could you take us to Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 to 17? And he actually quotes mm -hmm. that ancient prophecy. Now, we're learning something here, aren't we? We're learning that these men and women of God through the ages they took the scriptures seriously mm -hmm. because they didn't have access to all of these Bibles that we have. There were scrolls, but most of them had to mm. memorize what was in the sacred scriptures and read to them. Mm. Let's see what Matthew says in Matthew 4, verses 12 to 17. Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the G Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light has dawned. Mm. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to, and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Notice that the inspired uh, text of the New Testament says that inspired text of the Old Testament mm. is talking about Jesus. Mm. Yes. He's the light of the yes. world. You know, sometimes people say, well, you can't, you can't tell what's going to happen 700 years. In. That would be a coincidence mm -hmm. if that happened. But the yeah. gospel prophets say no, as it was written by the prophet, mm -hmm. yeah. a virgin yes. shall conceive. Or as it was written, in, you in Galilee, you yeah. know, you'll see a great light. Mm -hmm. So I think there's confidence, isn't there? Yeah. Of course, yes. Jesus also believed that those scriptures were pointing to him. He said, these are they that testify of me, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is really exciting as we see these prophecies about Messiah. Now, before we go on in chapter 9, I'm excited because the darkness that Jesus dispels mm -hmm. isn't just back then. That's isn't that yes. right, Lisa? Yes. Mm -hmm. That darkness is dispelled now. Mm -hmm. In yes. fact, some of us maybe all of us have had darkness dispelled from our lives. Is that yes. right? Yes. yes. And certainly people watching, you're watching Hope Sabbath School today, you say, Derek, I know what that means. I, I know what it's like to live in darkness. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, the light of the world, dispelled the darkness. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. So what is the appropriate way to respond to the fact that the light of the world has dispelled our darkness? Well, there's a text. Where is it found? Stephanie, Peter. do you remember? Yes, First Peter chapter... 2 verse 9. Would you read it for us? Sure. You probably have memorized it, but it's a beautiful text. And I think it, it's not only a description, but it's a, it's a challenge to us mm. as well. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So what's an appropriate response? Proclaim, Proclaim. the praises. <laughs> yeah, 
praises. Not proclaim our praises, right? His praises. His praises. Mm -hmm. His praises. Yes. yes. Who called us out of darkness. Mm -hmm. Now, I think in a testimony, it's okay to say, you know, I, I struggle with a lot of sin. I don't want to focus on all of that. Mm -hmm. I want to praise the one who delivered me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He called me out of darkness. Now, I'm looking at this wonderful group of uh, godly Enoch men and women, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't know, is... Has, has God had to deliver you out of darkness at any point? Does anybody have a testimony that you could share where you would say, you know, there was a dark time in my life and, and, and Jesus, the light of the world, dispelled that darkness? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Yes, Christian. You know, I, I grew up as a, as a PK. You know, and that PK. means a pastor. That means a pastor's kid. Okay. Right? Yeah. And um, so for the first 18 years of my life, you know, I, I lived, you know, under the shadow of my father as the pastor, you know, mm. and, um, and, and so throughout, you know, my, my childhood, um, going to church was, you know, was something that, uh, that was quite, um, you know, interesting because, because I had that identity as being a part of the pastor's family. Mm. Well, fast forward now to, to when I finished my senior year in high school. And, uh, and I, I went to Southern Adventist University in Tennessee. And my parents were at the time missionaries in the Philippines. Mm. Long way away. Long way away. And so when they took me to the campus of Southern and dropped mm. me off uh, and left me there, this would be the first time that I would be apart from my mom and dad. Okay, And I can't explain it um, in words, but I can tell you this that I had a type of, of identity crisis, if you want to put it that way, mm. if only because I was no longer the PK. Mm -hmm. You know, as I mingled and got to know other students, they didn't know me from Adam. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that did something to me. That, that impacted me in a very powerful way. And, uh, and I, till this day, I, I, I know that it was God's doing mm -hmm. because it was not, it was a very difficult time, to be honest with you, because I started questioning my faith in the sense of why, why do I believe what I believe? And, um, and this caused a lot of emotions, you know, mm. uh, questionings that I had never asked before. So mm. in a sense, it was a dark time. Mm -hmm. And because um, I knew I shouldn't be asking these questions, but I, but I was. But and, actually, um, hold just a second. It's okay to ask those questions, yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but keep going. <laughs> well, let but, me tell you why I said that, though. Okay. Because I was in the theology department. Okay. I was enrolled to be a pastor. So you thought it was a little awkward. A little awkward. For a, pa a pastor in training to ask big questions about whether there's a God and how he would relate to my life. How, how did Jesus deliver? How did the light of the world deliver you from the darkness? You know, and I'm so thankful that the Spirit of God was there to, to literally impress me with the steps I should take. Mm. What I did was I felt impressed to take my Bible and go up behind the campus. It was a biology, biology trail. And I took my Bible and I went on by myself down this trail in the backwoods and no one was around and I remember I, I, I fell down on my knees mm. mm -hmm. and, and I began to pray and my prayer was simply this, God convict me, ah. I need conviction, <laughs> convict me and it was audible I'm sure, <laughs> you know I, I'm thinking no one heard me but, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I, was, um, I was just, it was just me and God. You mm. know? And, uh, and that was the beginning of several personal mm -hmm. encounters with God where my prayer was the same, convict me, convict me, convict me. Mm. And this went for about a few months. And m to make the long story short, I'm praising God because he answered my prayer because I literally felt fire in my bones, <laughs> if you want yeah. to put it that way. Wow. I felt mm -hmm. conviction. Mm. Um, and for the first time in my young adult life, I felt like I had taken ownership of my faith wow. and, mm -hmm. uh, and had walked into, into the marvelous light. <laughs> what a powerful testimony. Mm -hmm. Someone is watching today that says, I need to go out and, and, and say, Lord, convict me. Mm -hmm. Convict yes. me. Yeah. 
dispel the darkness. Yeah. Yes. And the darkness may not be that we're doing anything terribly evil or wicked, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's just like the darkness of the world. The world yes. is full of darkness, mm -hmm. yes. and we need the light of Jesus to dispel us. Well, he's more yes. than just the light, the great light. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 9 now. And Jason, if you could read what is perhaps one of the best passages, best known, at least for those who sing in Handel's <laughs> Messiah, right? They say, I think I've heard this before. Would you read it for us? Verses 6 and 7. I've got the New King James Version here. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. I want you to notice, just like we were saying about the virgin conceiving and bearing a child called Emmanuel, this is not just some ordinary baby born 700 right. years before uh, the Messiah came, right? right? This is a prophecy. The same here, this kingdom is going to last forever. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which title yes. there, speaking about Messiah, really catches your attention? Anybody? There's no right or wrong answer there. Yeah. Which one catches your attention, Lisa? I like Everlasting Father. And that again goes to, you know, him being Alpha and Omega. He's there from the beginning and his kingdom will have no end. So just showing the expanse of his kingdom, it gives me a lot of security. Mm -hmm. Now, someone might say, but he's the eternal son, not the, the father. But Jesus did say when he came to this earth, the son of God became flesh. If you've seen mm -hmm. me, You've seen the Father. You've seen the Father. So he's a revelation of the mm -hmm. everlasting Father. Yes. Stephanie? I think what impacted me the most was that the government shall be upon a child's shoulder. Mm. Ah. Mm. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon the child's shoulder. And yet that child is more than just mm. a human being. That's a profound thought that as this little baby and then little toddler and then little boy is growing up, that he is the one upon whom the government rests. rests. I mean, that's mm -hmm. profound, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yes, Billy. Yeah, um, well, first of all, I like all of them. I, I don't have <laughs> that's a, a good. favorite one. It reminds me of, um, you know, when somebody is so excited about seeing something that's wonderful and they cannot put it in, into words, <laughs> I think that's what's happening now. I remember, for instance, um, there's this big park uh, in the United States called the Grand Canyon. And my first exposure to the Grand Canyon, I said, what is, like, I don't know how to describe it. And I found myself explaining to a friend of mine that it's like a big, huge bowl and it, it's like empty. And so I was trying to describe it, but I couldn't find the words. So I think that's what uh, Isaiah is doing. Isaiah is giving like, you know, wonderful counselor. And it's funny that before that, at least in my version, it says, and his name shall be called. He didn't say names. He said his name. So he's trying his best to describe <laughs> how wonderful uh, that child would be. You kind of think of uh, the Apostle John in the Revelation trying to describe, you know, this glorious being and he falls down at his feet. You know, it's like uh, something that's beyond human words to describe. Yes. 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 But let's go forward to Luke now and see how the angels uh, describe this special child who will be born. Luke 2, verses 9 through 11. Christian, if you could read Luke 2, 9 through 11. I like, I like it when, when we, we hear a direct prophecy or a direct word from angels. Mm -hmm. You know, the angels also said this same Jesus is coming back again, right? Mm -hmm. In like manner. Mm -hmm. yes, I love to yes. hear those heavenly messengers. What do they say here in, uh, mm -hmm. this is right at the time that, that the prophecy is fulfilled, the, mm -hmm. the child has been born. Okay, I'll be reading Luke chapter 2, verses 9 to 11 from the New King James Version. And it says, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Mm -hmm. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, 
which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Mm. A Savior Christ, Christ mm. is, is, is Christos, is Messiah mm-hmm. in mm. Hebrew, right? It's, so it's like this is, this is the one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Christ think. the Lord, He's born. A Savior. Now I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. If Jesus, the Messiah, is the Savior of the world, yes. will everybody be saved? Mm. You know, there's some people that mm. believe that. We'll mm. all be saved because Jesus is a perfect Savior and he, mm. He's the Savior of the world. Mm-hmm. Will everybody be saved? Help me with the Bi- Bible insight there. Yes, Lisa. Um, everyone will be saved who wants to be saved. Everyone will be saved who wants to. Doesn't it say somewhere, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord Mm -hmm. will be saved? Mm -hmm. So that makes that choice to accept Mm -hmm. that salvation. Mm -hmm. Yes, Christian. Well, John 3 16, the verse that is so well known says, For whosoever believes in him Mm -hmm. shall have eternal life. Should not perish. Should not perish, but but have eternal life. So you would say, Everyone can choose to be mm-hmm. saved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. But everyone has a choice. Yes. yes. To believe. Now it's interesting yeah. that Christian shared a powerful testimony. Mm-hmm. He grew up in a home where God's word was honored, his parents were followers of Jesus, but he had to make that faith Person. his own. Yes. Yes. Personal. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, we all come from different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Do you remember a time when you said, I, I'm going to personally accept Jesus as my Savior. I'm going to say, Jesus, will you save me? Anybody, Jason, you grew up in a Christian family, I think, right? Yes. But you also had to make a choice. Do you remember when that happened? I do remember a specific time. I was around 10 years old, and I remember I was at a Christian summer camp. And during that time, uh, there were there were some songs about accepting Christ, and the leader of the camp uh, made an appeal for us to actually walk forward if we wanted to accept Christ as our Savior. And I don't believe before that point I'd actually responded to a specific appeal like this. And so I prayed to God, because I had prayed and I'd been talking to God, but I actually said I felt impressed by the Holy Spirit to go to the front and basically sort of by walking to the front, make this public commitment, praying to God, say, yes, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, as my Redeemer. Beautiful. Ten years old. That was a few years ago, but it's (laughs) changed the course of action from from then on, right? Yes, amen. And here you are on the Hope Sabbath School team. Anybody else? Can you think of a specific time? Lisa, you also grew up with godly parents, love the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. In fact, they're active leaders in in church, Mm -hmm. but but you had to have a time too. Can you think of a time? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I went through church school, I went to an Adventist Academy and an Adventist College, but it wasn't until my health crisis that really was a turning point in my life. And um, as I've shared in this program, I was diagnosed with cancer, and it was until I faced death that I started to ask the difficult questions. You know, if it were my time to die, what would be the other side of it? And I couldn't answer that because I didn't think that my life merited eternal life. And so I really had to dig in deeper. And it really was a turning point. If, if my life meant something, then was I living it to the glory of God? And if it was time for me to go, could I really come before God and say, yes, you know, I do want to receive this eternal life. Amen. It's a choice we all have to make, wow. which is what the next verse is talk about. We could just end with Handel's Messiah, you know, hallelujah. <laughs> no. But uh, but there's a choice to make. Billy, yeah. could you read the next verses in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 8 through 10? Isaiah chapter 9, verses 8 through 10. It's, uh, it's clear that we, we all have a choice to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. And I'll be reading from the uh, New King James Version, Isaiah 9, 8 through 10. The Lord sent a word against Jacob, and it has fallen on Israel. All the people will know. Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say in pride and arrogance of heart, mm-hmm. the bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with hewn 
stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Mm -hmm. Now, it would be nice if we have a recording of that, because it says they said with pride and arrogance, mm -hmm. the bricks have fallen down, yeah. but we will rebuild with mm -hmm. huge stones. Mm -hmm. The sycamore trees have fallen down, mm -hmm. but we will replace them I could add a word, with massive cedars. Mm -hmm. Do you see that arrogant yeah. attitude? Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is calling them to repent, yeah. and they're saying, in pride and arrogance, mm -hmm. well, if things fall down, we'll build them even stronger than before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where do you see that arrogant attitude elsewhere in Scripture? It is so dangerous, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, is there a story that comes to your mind and you say, oh, Jason, which one comes to mind? That sounds like the Tower of Babel to me, where the people literally said, we're going to come together and we're going to build this tower to show that we are greater than God and no flood can ever happen mm. and we can unite man under our own power. We don't need God. Mm. Genesis chapter 11, right? Yeah. So there's this story. People have heard of the Tower of Babel, but they don't realize mm. that that was an act of pride and Defiance. arrogance, mm. just mm. like this attitude. Yeah. Bricks fall down we'll put big rocks. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little sycamores fall down, we'll put huge cedars. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. else do you mm -hmm. see that? Because that is, you know what? That is the greatest sin. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. This proud, arrogant resistance against the love and mercy of God. Hey, Stephanie. It all stems from Lucifer, I believe. It Human does. Human beings are led by his influence to make these bold statement. Let's go there. We're actually going to study that in greater detail in, in a, a, a lesson that's just coming. But, but maybe someone who's here today for our program will miss it. So go to Isaiah 14 sure. with us, if you would, because there in verses 12 to 14, again, it's speaking about pride and arrogance uh -huh. of a king mm -hmm. of that time. Mm -hmm. But then something happens in the prophet's words, and it's clear that he's talking about a cosmic picture, yes. cosmic conflict. Mm -hmm. Would you read that for us in Isaiah 14, 12 to 14? Sure, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, who didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Mm. Mm. Did you count how many I wills were there? <laughs> mm. I counted five, but, but you see it's a, it's a problem, it isn't is. it? Yeah. Uh, against God, yeah. I'm going to usurp mm -hmm. God's position. Mm -hmm. You say, Derry, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. But it's not impossible to have that proud and arrogant attitude, yeah. Yeah. right? True. Yeah. Lisa? Yeah, and I just think back to Christ's um, testimony, I think it's in Philippians 4, where he said that he mm -hmm. considered it not robbery to be equal to God. Philippians 2, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, so he humbles himself. He humbles himself, even though he is, I mean, in the same likeness of God, he didn't think that I shouldn't put myself in the place of God. So we see two individuals who are in the presence of God, but their hearts are completely mm -hmm. different. Wow. The incarnation is the ultimate act of humility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, that the Son of God, the eternal Son of God, mm -hmm. would come not only into humanity mm -hmm. and take the form of a servant, mm -hmm. be, be obedient even to death. To death. That's the text, isn't it, in Philippians mm -hmm. 2. Even unto death is the ultimate act of humility. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. Lucifer, who's described in another place as a covering cherub who was created, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is the ultimate picture of pride and mm -hmm. arrogance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so thankful when you read this whole controversy that it's the one who humbled himself mm -hmm. and yes. came down yeah. who is Amen. the victor, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> just want to praise yeah. God for that, <laughs> yeah. Christian. You know, in, in the passage that Billy read a moment ago, I find it interesting that it says that they, they said, we will, we will. Mm -hmm. That's repeated in that initial passage, we mm -hmm. will. We will. But here in uh, Isaiah, or rather, yes, Isaiah 14, we find the repetition of I will, I will. So there's that common theme, we will, I will. Mm. And then, but then you refer to Jesus 
and his words mm. in the Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. where he said, not oh, my, my will, <laughs> but thy will be done. Pointing to the so, Father, right? So what, a, what, a, what an amazing Ooh. contrast there of pride mm. and humility. I feel we're walking on holy ground. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. we're, we're walking on holy ground yeah. because all of us run the danger mm. of a proud and arrogant wow. spirit. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah. We need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And he, he will, will lift us up yeah. in due time, mm. yeah. yes. according to his plan. Well, yeah. we're going on to verse 13, Lisa, of Isaiah. Isn't this one chapter <laughs> of this amazing book? Isaiah yeah. 9, verse 13, mm -hmm. we, we find here, well, if God loves the world, like Christian quoted mm -hmm. from John 3, 16, yeah. mm. why does he chastise people? Mm -hmm. Let's see what it says in okay. Isaiah 9, verse 13. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For the people do not turn to him who strikes them, nor do they seek the Lord of hosts. Now, you say, who? What does it mean he strikes them? Give me that in another, in other language. He disciplines. Disciplines them. Okay. Mm -hmm. We know times, example, would be when they're going to be taken into captivity, right? Yes. yes. That he's doing that because he wants them to repent. repent. Yeah. Yeah. And turn. And turn yes. from their wicked ways to him, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it say somewhere those the Lord loves, he chastens mm -hmm. yes. Yes. or rebukes? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So why does he do that? Help me again, because the rebellious heart just resists that. Mm -hmm. What's God doing there? Mm. Yes, Stephanie. From a bigger picture, when I, as I was reading through Isaiah, every t I could see God calling them to come out and pleading with them, change. These are the results, though, if you don't. But there was a constant pleading for them to turn. And I believe that that's his heart, is that he wants us to turn, that we might have life and have it more abundantly, a life with him. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12 and see if uh, this might help us. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 12. And... Um, Let's, let's begin with verse 3, if we can. Jason, could you read uh, from verse 3 down through verse 11 and see if that sheds some light. Uh, we know here that God wants everyone to be saved, right? Mm -hmm. And yet there's this proud, arrogant spirit that rises up so easily. What does the scripture say in Hebrews 12, beginning with verse 3? I've got the New King James Version, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 3 through 11 says, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons, my son. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, mm -hmm. and we paid them respect. Mm -hmm. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? Mm -hmm. For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of His holiness. Mm -hmm. Now no chastening seems to be joyful mm -hmm. for the present, True. but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness mm -hmm. to those who have been trained by it. Mm -hmm. So can you think of a time in your life when uh, the Lord chastened you. <laughs> now you say, Lord, I, I didn't like it at the time. In fact, doesn't it say it's not pleasant, right? Mm. Not particularly pleasant when it's happening. But I look back and I say, thank you, Lord, mm. for letting me have that difficult experience 
uh, Billy, and I'm sure someone watching, if you're watching Hope Sabbath School today, you say, Derek, I have a testimony. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. You say, I, I remember when the Lord chastened me, but he did it because he loves me, mm -hmm. right? Wants me to turn to him. Billy. Yeah. Well, the Lord is still chasing me. <laughs> even still today. chasing. Yes, I think that's true. And, and I think, um, and I'm going to get to my testimony, I think the reason why is because he's, he's trying to build in us that, that sense of humility. Like, mm. sometimes we need to humble ourselves. You know, every time we take a step uh, up or a step forward, you know, we learn more things. For instance, mm -hmm. uh, about the Bible, oh, you know, we just memorized a new verse. You know, there's a little pride that sometimes creeps in, <laughs> and God has to bring us down. Um, I remember, uh, for me, uh, going from... Uh, um, uh, uh, high school into college, I was acing exams. I was a top uh, uh, student, and then when I got got into college, I I just flunked it. Well, I, I was not uh, 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 passing uh, a lot of classes. I was just getting a lot of bad grades, mm -hmm. and I was wondering, God, you know, what's going on? And I remembered that it got to the point where even the dean of the school got in my case and said that if you did not, you know, pass the next semester, you will be kicked out. Um, and I finally, in a sense, like gave up in a sense, like doing things my own way. Mm. And I just relied completely uh, on God. Um, and later on, I, I found out that I was diagnosed with a particular disease that affected my learning ability. And mm. I made it, I, I uh, made it uh, out of, uh, from college, but then I always ask God, why did you allow that to happen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I, I mm -hmm. did, I felt very cha you know, chased, uh, chastened a lot, uh, only to find out two years later that I had uh, kids who also struggled, who looked like me, who were struggling in school. And I told them that, hey, you know, you guys think you had it, had it bad, but you know, I got it so bad that uh, the dean of a school of you know, 800 plus kids you know, got onto my case, saw that I was you know, bound for failure, and he, he basically wrote that to me because I was that bad. Mm. Um, but God got me through. Amen. And that was an encouraging, I encouragement, not just for them, but also uh, uh, friends, uh, family friends who felt the same way about their sons, uh, that you know, you, uh, they, they see them in me, and they see that they're not gonna make it. It's so hard, but I told them that, no, God got me through this. So you, yeah. God gave you a testimony yeah. through that chastening. That. Yes. You know, I had a little flashback when, we, when I asked that question. Mm -hmm. It was the day of my doctoral defense for my doctorate. And I was feeling a little bit, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> proud of myself. I was reading through the Bible. This was totally unplanned except by God. Mm -hmm. I'm reading through Jeremiah, and I'm, I'm not going to have you turn to it. It says in Jeremiah 9, 23, Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let not the mighty man boast of his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let the one who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, yeah. that I am mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a little boing on the side of my head that morning of saying, Derek, you know, <laughs> I've got a plan for you, but stay humble, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to yes. boast about anything, no. boast. boast about my character and who I am. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes? yes? Yes. Great and awesome God. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think you're right. We need some chastening every mm. once in a while. Yes. I sense some may be coming our way, but <laughs> we, we know that the ones that the Lord loves, He chastens. Exactly. In the last minutes of our study, we just want to look at a few other passages now going mm -hmm. to Isaiah chapter 11 and 12. And you say, Derek, there's just so much in this book. Mm -hmm. But it's all pointing to Jesus the Messiah, every portion fulfilled in him. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Christian, if you could start by reading verses 1 and 2. And then, Stephanie, I'll ask you to read verses 3 through 5. We're going to look at a few verses in chapter 11. Christian? Okay, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Mm. Now, does that ring some bells or wave a little flag connected to Jesus? 
Uh, what, what words l tie in there, Jason, that catch your attention? So stem of Jesse, Jesse was David, the king's father. Okay, and, and of course Jesus is the son of David. In fact, that's also a, a, a messianic term. They call him son of David, right? Mm -hmm. Hosanna to the son of David. Yeah. So immediately you see that. Did you see anything else in the prophecy that caught your attention? What about the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him? Do you remember the prophecy that Jesus quoted in Nazareth? It was actually also by Isaiah the prophet where he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. So you see, in the time of Jesus when this is happening, those people who've read the prophecies, including the gospel prophet, it's like... One thing yes. after another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go on, Stephanie, verses 3 through 5 of chapter 11. And the King James Version says, And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Mm -hmm. Now is that prophecy speaking about the glorious second coming of Jesus, or is it speaking about the first coming as a baby in Bethlehem? I think second, second coming. coming. It, it sounds like it, doesn't yeah. it? There's yeah. the judgment, yeah. Oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, not everybody will welcome him because they didn't mm -hmm. choose mm -hmm. to accept his salvation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, I don't know. Do you think Isaiah knew all of what, what this meant? Or was he just by the Spirit recording it, uh, trying to find the words guided by the Spirit? <laughs> what do you think, Stephanie? I th he probably understood some of it, but I don't think he understood it to the full extent but he was doing what the Holy Spirit was leading him to write down. Because there's times when we speak, I was speaking to Lisa off the air, and she was sharing a testimony of how God had led her to say something, and um, it, she didn't fully understand or fully grasp what that meant until mm -hmm. after she had said it. Mm. Wow. Well, I think that's true with prophecy. And Lisa, I'm going to ask you to read the next verses for us, uh, 11 verses 6 through 9, that sometimes it's only after the prophecy is fulfilled mm -hmm. that we fully understand it. Mm -hmm. Can you think of that? Jesus said, destroy this temple, mm -hmm. and in three days mm -hmm. I will raise it up again. Yep. Mm -hmm. They thought he was talking about the physical building. But, but John says, after the resurrection, we remembered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they understood the prophecy. Mm -hmm. Let's read on. This is amazing. Chapter 11, verses 6 through 9. Okay, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. Mm. And the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in mm. all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So Jason, what's happening now? What, what's, what's the vision sh showing him now? Now we're seeing the new earth because this is clearly not the earth that we live on today. <laughs> it isn't, is it? And let's not get bogged down with are there vipers on the new heavens and new earth. The point mm -hmm. is it's totally different. All of yes. the dangers that were in this earth are gone, That's yeah. right? Yes. And there is, uh, there is a place where righteousness dwells. Mm -hmm. uh, that, th we're going to study more about that in this series, but I want to come to the last passage. Mm -hmm. And Christian, I'm going to ask if you'd read for us chapter 12. It, it's actually a hymn. Chapter 12 of Isaiah, a hymn of praise, verses 1 through 6. And I think it's an appropriate way to finish our study. We just want to say, Lord God, you're so awesome. Mm -hmm. mm. And he loved the world so much, mm. yes. the word became flesh mm. and dwelt among us as our Savior. Let's read chapter 12, all, all six verses. Okay, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. 
and it says, In that day you will say, O Lord, I will praise you, though you were angry with me. Mm. Your anger is turned away, mm -hmm. and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He is also has become my salvation. Therefore, with the joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day you will say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name, mm. declare his deeds among the peoples, make mention that his name is exalted, sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry and shout, O inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. So we started out by saying we praise him who called us out of darkness. Mm -hmm. He's the light of the world, Messiah, mm -hmm. into his marvelous light, and we end with uh, just praising the Holy One in our midst. Mm -hmm. What's the most important lesson you've taken from our study today? Yes, Lisa. I like what it says there in verse one, that your anger is turned away and you comfort me. God's anger is not forever. And we don't believe that it's a, you know, a forever anger, but at some point he will turn and he will comfort us. And so if we've enjoyed chastening or discipline, whatever it is, God still wants to comfort us and, and calm us down. So that's I think, a promise. I think he's really angry with the proud and arrogant spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. He loves us. God so loved the world, right? Yeah. But, but he's angry because that proud and arrogant yeah. spirit could cause our eternal ruin, mm -hmm. That's right? Yeah. Uh, yes. He, he wants to uh, draw us into that loving relationship mm -hmm. with himself. Well, you're watching today and you're saying, I want that close, intimate relationship with God. I, I, I want to be out of darkness in His marvelous light. Well, that's our prayer for you. And I want to just remind you of this beautiful resource, Radical Evidence. Jesus is not just another great teacher. He's not just another prophet. He is the Messiah. And all of the prophecies of Messiah are fulfilled in Him. You'll learn about it in this book, Radical Evidence. You can share with others. All you have to do is write us an email, sshope hopetv.org, and put in the line, in the subject line, free offer. We'll make sure you can get a free download of the audiobook Radical Evidence. I want you to be able to share with others that Jesus the Messiah can dispel the darkness mm -hmm. and save them too. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, what a powerful study. The Spirit of God revealed so much to Isaiah the prophet. Thank you that he was willing to say, here am I, send me. He was willing to write down this record and that the Spirit of God preserved it for us today. Yes. I pray that all darkness would be dispelled from our lives by Jesus, the light of the world, yes. and we would share His light with others. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us. What an amazing book, Isaiah the Gospel Prophet, 2,700 years ago, and yet so relevant for our lives today. Stay with us on this life-changing journey. And don't forget, go out and be a blessing to those around you.